Hello, and this is my tutorial on how to make bullet simulations using ANSYS. If you don't have ANSYS already installed, you can go to my first link in the description where you can find ANSYS Student, and you can click this button here to download it for free. Another piece of software that you might need is FreeCAD. Any type of CAD software will do, but FreeCAD is obviously free and it's easy to use. Now you can make your models in FreeCAD, or you can go to Grab CAD where you can get free CAD models. Some of these CAD models use SolidWorks project files, so do be wary of that. But, anyways, let's get started. You want to find the Workbench tool from ANSYS. Inside the Workbench, you'll find explicit dynamics. You'll want to open up one of those. One of the first things you'll want to grab is the engineering data. In here, you can find the data sources. When doing these types of simulations, you should use the explicit materials. And here you'll find a whole library of different materials that you can use. You'll simply just click add to engineering data and this will add it to the list of materials that you can use. Once you have all the materials that you need you can go back to your project. In here you'll find the geometry tab. Usually I import geometry but you can go into the design modeler and make your own stuff there. Although I found that very hard to use so like I said, you can just go ahead and import geometry. You can import geometry by making step files. These you can make in FreeCAD or any other kind of CAD software. You can just create a new file and go to part. Now I'm going to make a simple test here by just placing a cube. You can use this cube off in the top right hand corner to change your views, middle mouse to move it around, or scroll in and out. You can click on the cube to change the length, width, and height. So I'm going to make a 25 millimeter cube in width, and 50 in length, and 50 in height. And there we go. Now it's time to add the projectile. You can go on GrabCAD and find a projectile there, or you can model your own in any kind of CAD software like FreeCAD. I have a 50 cal FMJ that I made in FreeCAD, so I'll just import it. I'm going to rotate it into position. And also move it. Once your projectile is into position, make sure it's pretty close to the object that you're going to simulate against. That way it doesn't take extra time out of your simulation. It's just right there. Now you also want to pay attention to the bottom right, where you'll see your X, Y, and Z axis. You need to pay attention to it to the way your projectile is pointing. That way in the workbench you know where to put your velocity. In FreeCAD all you need to do to export is select your objects, go to file, and export. You can then name your file whatever you want and make sure that it's under a step file type. We can then go back to the workbench and import geometry. Once we've imported the geometry, you'll see that the model has changed its status. Go ahead and double click it. Once we are inside, 
you'll see your model that you made and you'll see a bunch of tabs over here. Now I'm going to rotate over in the geometry tab you'll find all your different parts of your model. By clicking on one it will highlight the part that you have selected. You can go down here to material and select the desired material for that part. And you'll go ahead and add that to each part. Once you've assigned each part its material, head on over to mesh. In mesh, you can assign the elemental size of your parts. The lower the number, the more polygons the parts have. Do take note that in ANSYS Student, there is a limitation on how many vertices that you can have. So the bigger your part or the bigger your simulation, the bigger your elementals, your element size is going to have to be because otherwise it is going to limit you on what you can do. For this tutorial, I'll switch it back to three. This will keep it pretty quick, but detailed enough that it's okay. Once we have this in place, we can go over to initial conditions. You'll want to insert a velocity. And here, you'll want to select the bodies of your projectile. You can control click each one of your parts. If you happen to have a part that needs to be hidden, you can go up to that certain part, right click and hide body, and select all parts of your projectile. Now that they're all selected, you can go back to your velocity and apply the geometry. It should say how, how many ever bodies you have for your projectile, and they should all be selected on your screen. Now we'll want to apply the velocity. I have my measurements set to millimeters, and it's set to vector by default. We want to switch this to components. We have to take note of the direction our projectile is pointing, which is in the y direction. So that's where we'll want to apply our velocity. Here I have my specs that I have laid out for my certain projectile. Here I have my feet per second, as well as my millimeters per second. So I'm going to copy this over and put it on, it, on the y component. Once again, this may be different depending on how you oriented your file. Once that's done, we can head over to Analysis Settings. We'll want to right click, Insert, Fix Support. We'll want to select only the face, faces, of the material that we are going to simulate against. Using fixed supports on the target allows a much cleaner simulation as well as a quicker simulation at potentially the cost of some realism. But once again, this is more for entertainment than reality. So we'll go ahead and apply the fixed supports of those four faces. We'll head on over to analysis settings. In here, we'll want to set our end time. I usually set mine to 0 0.0004. This gives the projectile enough time to pass through whatever you need to, while still allowing enough time for after effects. The last thing we'll want to do is add deformation total to our solution. 
This will allow us to actually see our simulation be done after it's finished rendering. Now once we've made sure we've all set this up, you can go ahead and hit solve. And if you have no errors, and if you've done everything vaguely correct, it should start solving the mathematical problem. All right, our simulation is done. Let's head over to total deformation. And in here, we can view what our simulation has done. Now, obviously, I didn't really select any good materials for this, but you get the picture of how it's done. We can change the amount of frames and the amount of seconds that those frames go across. I usually do 100 frames, 3 seconds. We can also change what it looks like. I usually do solid fill with no wireframe. And that looks a bit better. You can then save or export your file to a certain location with a certain name. So I will go ahead and do that right now. And it will run the simulation like that. And in my folder, we'll find my test file where it comes out. Pretty cool. And that is a basic tutorial on how you can do bullet simulations or really any other type of velocity simulations that you like. Once again, this simulation really didn't do much because I didn't select the best materials, plus I was running at a lower mesh quality. If you have any questions or problems, leave them in the comments below. I will be adding a Discord soon to the channel where you can post any of your questions or suggestions there. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope this was helpful.